Um, Jake Weinbach. Is that it? I, I'm hoping I'm saying his name right. I always butcher names. You know the show. Yeah. But he said the Pistons could be a team to monitor regarding the level of interest in All-Star, Pascal Siakam. So my question to you is, would Pascal Siakam be the right move right now for this young Pistons team? Before I do answer that, I, I, I just kind of want to give like a PSA. Like, is this isn't so much him reporting. It's just him kind of like assuming. Because yeah. I don't want people coming, like listening to the podcast first five minutes. Pascal Siakam's not coming to Detroit. Because you know you're going to have those fans. Um, it was just him kind of like connecting. That's like, hey, Casey's in the front office. You know, Siakam played in Toronto. Like, it, it was just like probably the most, like, I don't want to say bullshit, but it was just kind of like a, a bullshit tweet. Um, he does fit with the Pistons, but I, I think the asking price for him, I think it's just too high. I think you would have to give up either a Sar, Ivy, Derner, K to even get Toronto to pick up the phone personally. And I, I don't think you can kind of just like, hey, Here's Hayes and Wiseman you wanted to make a deal. Like, I don't think Toronto's at that point of that stage of, like, trading Siakam to just a team just to trade him. I think they want to get, like, peak value for him. But what if – remember that Dallas trade we were talking about? I think it was the Dallas trade we were talking – no, New Orleans for Zion Williamson. If it's a trade package similar to that where it's Bojan, Killian Hayes, and James Wiseman, or Marvin Bagley, whoever you want to throw in there, for Pascal Siakam, would you do that? Would you pull the trigger on that trade then? I mean, with that question, like, yeah, I would. But, like, I I've tried to be, like, a realist and, like, not, like, do it like a 2K trade in my head. Because I can guarantee you I can get, like, Pascal Siakam for, like, Corey Joseph and, for, like, six first-round picks. Oh, I guarantee, yeah. I could, guarantee you I could do it. Um, but – with, with him, I, it's just – it's a one-year rental. And that – to me, I think that's the biggest risk with him is he said that if you trade for me, I'm not going to resign with you. He, he said that in a, a recent uh, article piece. And uh, I saw reporting that, like, uh, a contract for him could be, like, north of $200 million. So it's just, like, do you really want to possibly trade a valuable asset on your team and then possibly lose him in free agency because he's just going to re-sign with the Raptors because he wants to stay there. So you're saying, so he's basically saying, like, no matter what team I go to, I'm only here for a year, and then I'm going back to Toronto. Is that kind of like the underlining of what he was saying? Yeah, kind of, I know it's not the same, but kind of like how Kawhi got traded to the Raptors, won a championship, and signed with the Clippers. Mm. That's basically what he would probably do. I think we do need a power forward on this team, and I love Isaiah Stewart. I really do. Uh, but I think that's that's one position that I think most Pistons fans can agree where we do need to upgrade that position. I think Isaiah Stewart is a great player. I think he can you know, shoot the shit at the ball from the outside. But I think adding like a, an all-star like that, yeah, I, I think a, a lot of fans would be happy with it. But I, I just don't think it's a realistic option personally. And I, I think Jake was just, you know, tweeting the tweet and kind of got a lot of Pistons fans excited. Yeah, I just want to, like, talk about it just for a second, though, because I said on Twitter, like, this is not the time for the Detroit Pistons to make a move like this. I'd rather have them trade for a Pascal Siakam or a player like that when they're more ready to compete. And I've changed my mind. I've done a complete 180 on that take since I tweeted that out. I would, I think he'd be a great fit in Detroit, man, especially if the Pistons are trying to win this upcoming season, because we're just, the Pistons are just too young. And I think if you can give them another guy that can score the ball in isolation in pick and roll as the handler or as the role man, a guy that can sh catch and shoot, even though the numbers aren't, great i think he was like 34 percent on three attempts per game with the catch and shoot but a, a great um one-on-one -on -one game decent playmark i think he averaged around six assists per game maybe a tad under that good rebounder but it gives you just another guy offensively where if Cade goes to the bench you're not relying on Jaden ivy even though i think Jaden ivy is going to be very good i just think right now his place isn't going to generate that many wins. So if you could get another guy in there that could create for himself and for others while Cade 
gets a rest on the bench, your team's going to be that much better. That is why I would like Pascal Siakam. Plus, not a bad defender, not great by any measures, but looks better on a better overall team, good help defender. And I think, like it is, like I think in many cases, once you're not the focal point of an offense, that second, that other side of the ball is just going to get better. And I think the same thing would happen with Pascal because he just has that relentless motor going all the time. I don't know. I think it would be a great fit for the Detroit Pistons. And it kind of sucks that it's just, you know, I mean, I'm glad we have a topic for the podcast, but I just wish there was a little more truth to it, you know, because yeah, that's, he's the type of player, the type of all guy that's made an all, he's made two all NBA teams, made two all-star appearances, but he's the type of guy where you could see him being in Detroit long-term because he just has that kind of low key personality. Basically, from like what I've seen and what I've read. I mean, I don't know him personally by any measure, but he just seems like he would fit that Detroit mentality where he would be here for a while. And I think his game is going to age pretty well. I mean, I used to think like the moment an NBA player hit like 32, I'm like, up, oh, it's downhill. It's downhill at 32, but it's a whole different day now, day and age where there's just so much going into their bodies and how much they work and how much rest they get that. You know, these guys, they play at a high level till they're like 35, 36, 37 years old now. And I think he's one of those guys that could do it. I think the front court depth is interesting, especially a power forward. Um, you know, we, we've talked about Marvin Bagley saying he doesn't want to play center. He wants to play power forward. I mean, if that's something that he really wants to do, I think he's more than capable of playing power forward. Uh, we saw this summer that Wiseman and Duran were in the front court. I want to say Wiseman was playing center and Dern was playing power forward. I might be wrong. Uh, someone could probably correct me. But I think what the Pistons want to do before they make a big splash like this is let's see what we have. Let's see what Cade Cunningham looks like with a, a Jalen Dern in the starting lineup. Let, let's see how Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey do in the backcourt together. I think a move like this is going to happen. I really do, Lance. I just think for this season, they want to see what's there. Because you could make a trade like this right now. I think you have the young assets. Uh, you you have some. I don't want to say cheap contracts, but you you have contracts like you know like a Bagley, a Wiseman that aren't too expensive, but you know a, a lot of teams would probably like to have them. I think for this season, we just have to see what we have in our young talent, and maybe next year we can be in that conversation for a you know borderline all star all star type level player. 